When we discuss the geometry of the ancient Greeks, we mainly focus on straight edge and compass constructions like what is found in Euclid's Elements. These are the constructions where you are only allowed to draw circles, lines, and the points of intersection between them. But some Greek geometers investigated what would be possible if they added additional curves to their tool sets. One of those mathematicians, Apollonius of Perga, devoted eight books to the study of curves known as conic sections. So what are conic sections? These are the 2D curves you get when you slice a double cone with a plane. They allow you to do things like double the volume of a cube, which is famously impossible to do with compass and straight edge alone. The angle of the slice gives different types of curves, and Apollonius gave names to each of these types. There's the ellipse, which the circle is a special case. The parabola, which is created when the plane passes parallel to the surface of the cone. And the hyperbola, which occurs when the plane cuts through both cones, giving two separate curves. Apollonius is also known for his work on finding circles tangent to a given set of points, lines, and circles. This is now called the problem of Apollonius, and its full statement goes as follows. Construct a circle tangent to three given objects in a plane, where an object may be a line, a point, or a circle, or any combination of those. So here in this example, we have one of each, a point, a line, and a circle, and we've drawn a circle that is just touching each of these. In general, there can be more than one tangent circle. In this case, there are two, one that touches the closest point of the given circle, and one that touches the farthest point away from the tangent center. For this discussion, we will focus on the case where all three objects are circles. This is the most challenging of the problems and involves up to eight tangent circles, like what is shown here. For each of the three circles, the tangent circle can either touch the closest point on the circle or the farthest point, which is why there are, in general, eight cases. Unfortunately, Apollonius' work on the problem has been lost, so we can only guess as to how he solved it. The solution I will present here will use Apollonius's beloved conic sections, which some may grumble isn't the way the ancient Greeks would have approached it. But Apollonius wasn't afraid to use conic sections in his constructions, and I'd like to think that he at least saw and appreciated the beauty of how this problem is connected to the cone. Now, I should stop and mention that the problem of Apollonius can be solved with straight edge and compass alone, which is also known as a plane construction. Using conic sections is known as a solid construction because it uses the three-dimensional solid cone. Francois Vieta was able to demonstrate a plane construction in the 16th century, and he scoffed at the Belgian mathematician Adrian von Ruhmann, who attempted the problem using hyperbolas. He offered this rebuke. Therefore, my brilliant Adrian, and if you please, Apollonius of Belga, because the problem that I have proposed is plain. You, however, explained it as solid. In the ancient Greek view, conic constructions were viewed as inferior to the trusty straight edge and compass, only attempted as a last resort. But I claim you lose out on the beauty of this problem by ignoring conic sections. Plus, we now have computers where we can draw all sorts of complicated curves just as easily as we can draw a line or a circle, so we don't need to continue to impose those same practical limitations. So let's just ignore Vieta's smug laughter and get back to the problem of Apollonius. First, let's just look at two circles and try to find circles that are tangent to them. One thing we can do is to grow these circles at the same rate and mark some point where the circles collide. We can then run things backwards, growing that point of intersection into a circle at the same speed as the other two circles are shrinking. When we're back to where we started, we have a tangent circle. This tangent circle is external to the other two circles, meaning no overlap. We'll call this external-external. We can also start by first shrinking the circles down to zero, then growing them as before.
the tangent circle that is produced touches the points furthest away from it on the other two circles and is internally tangent to them. This means their interiors overlap and we'll call it internal internal. We can also grow one circle and shrink the other and vice versa. This will give us two more types of tangents, external internal and internal external. Instead of just looking at a few representative points of collision, let's look at all of them. We do this for all four combinations of growing and shrinking the two circles, and we see a beautiful pattern emerge. we get two distinct conic sections, where each point on those conic sections is a center of a circle of tangency. When the two circles do not overlap, we get two hyperbolas. When one circle is inside the other, we get two ellipses. And then a combination of ellipse and hyperbola when the two circles intersect. So now the question is why? Why conic sections? Why two of them? Let's first look for the hidden cone. After all, we're dealing with conic sections, so there must be some cones lurking about. Instead of looking at circles in a 2D plane with motion, shrinking and expanding, let's look at a three-dimensional space where the third dimension is time. From there, we see that these growing and shrinking circles are actually cones. That's where our cones are hiding, one dimension up. With a little algebra, we can see that when we subtract one equation for the cone from the other, the quadratic terms cancel out, which means that these cones intersect along a plane. And we know that a plane intersected with a cone gives a conic section. And that's why conic sections pop up in a solution to this problem. When we project this intersection down onto the xy plane, the conic sections may get distorted, but they remain conic sections. This is due to a beautiful theorem in projective geometry. Conic sections get transformed to other conic sections by projections. So why two of them? For each circle, there are two choices of where to place the cone, depending on if the circle belongs to the top or the bottom of the double cone. Because of this, there are four arrangements of the two cones for the given two circles. And when projected down onto the xy plane, two of them give duplicate projections, so you are left with just two distinct conic sections. So we've gone through the theory, now it's time to see it in action. Um, let's see how we can use these conic sections to find tangent circles. So for this, I'm gonna use GeoGebra which is a free online graphing calculator tool. Um, it's also what I've been using for the visual, visualizations in this video. So first we need to draw three circles. Uh, so I'll go up to the toolbar, um, click the circle tool, and draw um, three circles. All right, that should be good. Um, so I've also created this custom tool uh, that allows us to draw the conic sections between two circles. So I've called it circle circle locus, and what you do is you select two circles, and it'll draw the two corresponding conic sections. So let's just select that tool, um, choose these two circles, and great, we have the the two hyperbolas that we that we expect. I can do the same thing for this pair of circles. And then finally, for this pair of circles. So that's a, that's a lot of lines on the screen, but what we're looking for are places where three lines intersect. Because uh, that intersection will be the center of a tangent circle. So for example, uh, here's a place where the three lines intersect. Looks like over here, um, we also have a place where 
uh, three lines intersect. Here's one, two, and there should be uh, at most eight of those. Um, so let's choose one. We'll use the intersect tool and let's just choose this one here. And great, so that is a center of a tangent circle that's tangent to all three of the circles. Um, so I also created a tool to make it more convenient to draw this tangent circle. So you select the center of the circle, select uh, two of the, of the other circles, and then there we have it, uh, a circle that is tangent to all three circles. Okay, great, that was actually pretty easy, uh, finding the tangent circle. Uh, so let's try another example where the circles overlap each other. Uh, if you were doing a, a compass and straight edge construction, you'd, you would need a whole new method uh, for this. Uh, but using the conic sections, we can apply the same approach. Uh, so again, let's draw three circles. We'll draw one big circle and then two other circles that are in the uh, interior of the larger circle. Uh, so again, we use the circle circle locus tool. Uh, this time, instead of uh, hyperbolas, we get ellipses because one circle is inside the other one. Uh, for this, it's also ellipses. Uh, and then for these two circles, they're, um, they're, they don't overlap, so these are hyperbolas. So again, we find uh, places where the three lines intersect. Uh, there's looks like there's one here and one here. Let's just choose that one. So we do intersect and we mark that point where they intersect. Um, and then we just draw, draw the tangent circle. And there you have it. Um, this circle is tangent to all three. Um, and it uses the same process as we did for circles that are external to each other. So thanks for watching. And I hope that gives you a new appreciation for the problem of Apollonius and also the beauty of conic sections. Mm -hmm.